A very good morning to you all, dear brothers and sisters of India. Thank you very much for, uh, thank you very much to the uh, organizers of this Ninth World Petrochol Congress. Um, thank you very much indeed to um, Dr. V.K. Gar, uh, Dr. Mr. Alok Perti, um, Mr. B.K. Chaturvedi, Mr. Anil Rasdan, who's been in front of the um, advances in this uh, very important uh, space for reflection and analysis. And Dr. Anil Garg. Students, specialists, researchers, members of um, the um, think tanks, members of the uh, media, members of different consortiums and corporations and uh, analysis and intelligence information or intelligence um, consultants. Venezuela, India, the world, oil market. There is, right now, of course, we know, we see, there is a vibrant element right now about these three aspects of life. India, Venezuela, world oil market. Energy in general. Today, you must have woken up and found new information about Venezuela about world market, but also we bring in another element, and it cannot, we cannot avoid it, and that is the government of the United States. It's not my fault. I wouldn't like to mention the government of the United States, but they are the ones who bring, um, who bring the topic of aggression, of insults, and many other topics that shouldn't exist. For example, in such an interesting um, area of world development as energy. Trade between consumers and producers. Because in fact, civilization has it that the world advances and the world evolves so that more people can come to understand each other, more people can have the chance to develop relationship and coexistence methods to coexist, to develop fair trade, and to make sure that all countries around the world have the possibility of applying the teachings of civilization, of science, technology, diplomacy, politics, and the development of international institutions and law so that we can all have a better life, a life dignified, a life of respect, a life we can, where we can all expect every member of the international community to behave as a civilized member of the international community. We have lots of lessons from history. And I would like to, here today, as ambassador from Venezuela, I would like to come here and speak about, for example, simply uh, how to um, uh, support and uh, uh, foster more research in environmental protection and environmental uh, requirements and priorities in the industries of petroleum, coal, gas, and so on. To cope for energy satisfaction in, 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 in societies and to care for the environment that is the only one that will continue providing raw materials and energy sources for our generations to continue life on Earth, for our generations to continue 
and for the market to continue providing the possibility that we can produce wealth. Because in the end, economy in any country is there simply with the purpose of providing a better life for everybody. At least that's what we think. And we know certainly that here in India, the state and government are um, <clears throat> in that search too. So we need to talk about oil. We need to talk about energy sources. We need to talk about uh, considerations about consumers and considerations about producers of oil. Therefore, we must include here, uh, many of you know uh, that when we talk about, here in India, we talk about energy, the government has four specific aspects that must be always taken into consideration. Access to energy, security for access to energy, energy availability, and energy affordability. In all four respects, the relationship between India and Venezuela is fostered, protected, taken into consideration by the Venezuelan part. That's why India and Venezuela are producing together oil in the largest oil reserve in the world, certified oil reserves in the world in Venezuela. ONGC, ONGC, and Indian Oil, and Oil India Limited are there with us, producing oil at the largest oil reserve in the world, in Venezuela. And the reason I repeat that there we are producing together is because we invited India a few years ago, about a decade ago, to start producing oil together. Because India sees and needs oil as a strategic um, policy for its development, for its survival, and for its consolidation as a world power in every sense and respect. And Venezuela was there, always, offering India the opportunity not only to get oil at an economical price with excellent conditions, and that's why we have become, for a number of years, the third, the fourth um, source provider of oil to India. And that has been kept there. And you've heard lately, in the last few days, about Venezuela's availability of oil and about Venezuela's uh, interest in increasing the relationship, the trade relationship with India to make sure that access to oil, security uh, in the access to oil, and affordability is there. The Minister of Petroleum from Venezuela was here for Petrotech 2019. He was here for two days. <clears throat> we had excellent uh, meetings. We had excellent reports. We had excellent relationships with private and public, like we have been having for a number of years with public and, pub and um, private Indian companies. And that is a matter between India and Venezuela. I ask each one of you here present, even the very young ones who are probably from different universities uh, here, maybe uh, UNEP, uh, University of Petroleum, and UPS, sorry, UPS. Uh, which universities are here, may I ask? UPS, yeah, yes. okay, I know that. <clears throat> I would like to ask a question to all of you. Why does any other country have to come in and express any opinions or even what happened a few days ago, a couple of days ago, threaten 
this relationship between India and Venezuela and threaten India if India continues to buy oil from Venezuela? What does any country around the world have to do in the relationship between India and Venezuela? Why should any other country limit the possibilities of India of accessing economic crude and continue processing and refining Venezuelan oil at the refineries in India that are designed and programmed to refine Venezuelan oil, the type of oil that comes from Venezuela? Why should any other country come into that? Why should any country or anybody in Washington come and threaten India? Why? We ask ourselves. In a place like this, Petro called Congress. We ask because here there are a number of stakeholders, people interested in the industry, people interested in the needs of the industry and in the results and products of the industry in its relationship with the development of India. We don't know. We don't know exactly. Um, we don't know. Well, I, uh, let's, to be honest, let's talk and let's call things the way they should be called. No country should intervene. No country should interfere in internal matters of any country. That is a principle of the United, uh, United Nations. United Nations. And here we find that the possibility of India accessing to oil is being limited, even threatened by a government in the north that every day talks about Venezuela. Because in Venezuela, we have the largest oil reserve. And it happens that only the countries where you find large oil reserves are the countries that apparently violate human rights. So they decide that after Iraq, after Libya, after destroying Syria, etc., they say, where is the next very big oil reserve? There. Ah, Venezuela. So then they discover that there are news agencies around the world that will do the job of lying to the world, systematically bombarding the world with fake news, fabricated news about human rights violations in Venezuela. And it just happens. By the way, this is important information. You can get it easily on YouTube. One, Venezuela is one of the only two countries with 100% literacy in Latin America. Venezuela is one of the two countries with the highest human development index in the Latin American region even after six years of aggression, economic aggressions, economic attacks, economic attacks on our currency, blockade, siege around Venezuela, so that they can say there is a problem of mismanagement of the economy in Venezuela. We have to do something about this country. And now they create the narrative, fabricated again about a human Humanitarian, a humanitarian crisis that we must all come in and help that country. Like they said 16 years ago, there are weapons of mass destruction in such a country, and believe me, the only way to finish with this is invade that country and kill everybody. And they did that everywhere. And they are inventing all this, and they are threatening governments, and they are threatening firms. What is this? Is this the 21st century? As I said at the beginning, I would like to spend these minutes only referring to such things as let's work more on, for example, Paris Agreement. Let's work more on Kyoto uh, environment uh, deals and protection. Let's talk more about that. But the same person who's trying to create and who is making the lives of millions of people in Venezuela a mystery, because 
because we are being blocked. We are not even medicines imported from India can enter Venezuela. And then they tell the world every day using Reuters, Associated Press, Associated France Press, CNN, etc., five or six very important news agencies which manipulate information. They tell the world this country is the peace. This country is. And in Venezuela, by the way, ex president Jimmy Carter, and you can get that on the internet also, in YouTube, right? President Carter, Venezuela elections. And President Carter has been in Venezuela three times in three immense international press conferences describing how Venezuela, according to the Carter Foundation, is the best electoral system in the world. And how elections in Venezuela are among the best election systems in the world. Because the government from Washington, they only recognize governments and elections when the people they support and finance win elections. But when others win elections, like President Maduro, he won the election last year, 2018, when it was constitutionally accepted, I mean constitutionally the time for presidential elections, and he won the elections last year. But because President Maduro has and supports the policy uh, of South-South relationship, of independence of every country, of non-interference, of sovereignty of every country, then that president must be changed. And then they apply operations of destabilization, of making people hungry, of violating human rights, of actually doing everything to kill thousands of people so that people get angry and they say it's a government fault, let's change the government, like they have been doing lately for the last six years, applying sanctions and crippling our petroleum industry, because that's what they want to do. They want to cripple our petroleum industry. They want to keep our cripple and destroy our economy so that they can come in and give only their corporations the business of oil production in Venezuela. So what we find here are not fair traders, not fair competitors. They use unfair, unlawful, criminal tactics to take competitors out of the business. We cannot call that business. We cannot call that democracy. We cannot call that institutions. We cannot call that a democratic government in the North, Big Brother. Certainly, they are not contributing with world balance and peace. And Venezuela will be there defending our country. There are many thousands of families every day supporting President Maduro on the streets, but these uh, information agencies do not inform you, because when you get every day the news from the newspapers and from television stations, what you get is what they need, these news agencies, Reuters, AP, AFP, CNN, BBC, and so on, distribute, because they are paid to get international news. Because newspapers and television stations cannot pay international correspondence. So they create a cartel of information, of fake information around the world. Because when they inform only uh, bad news about India, that news goes through France, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And they inform the rest of the world bad things. And the same the country. Why am I saying this? Because we want to continue producing oil. We want to continue producing the oil at the balanced price where consumers can buy and producers can continue producing. Where research can be, where you can invest in research. Where governments and companies 
can plan their strategic advances. Because if the price is not enough, you cannot have investment to continue producing oil. And India knows about this, although India largely is a consumer. India is also a producer in many countries, and India and the uh, oil industry in India understands the details and the ins and outs of oil production. And we know when the price of oil falls too low, there will be a backlash, there will be a whip. Because suddenly oil production will fall, and then bam, the oil prices go up. This is a cycle. There's enough uh, information and experiences around the world with history about these cycles. And the idea is to create balanced conditions. By the way, the petroleum minister from Venezuela is currently also the president of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. And by the way, next week, the same person will also take the presidency of the Gas Exporting Countries Forum. Will, do you think the problems in Venezuela have to do with human rights violations? Or do you think they have to do with taking away from Venezuela their control over the largest oil reserve in the world? That's criminal. That is criminal. And I, as an ambassador, I have to be here in the Venezuela-India blend mix. Make sure that India receives all the information India needs, and Indian oil industry, and Indian energy, uh, industry and uh, Indian government and state institutions to continue the access, the security and availability of oil resources. And Venezuela is contributing with that. And I would like to very quickly, I will have uh, just a few minutes more here. I was asked to come here as guest of honor. And I was so pleased that I could come and do this precisely this week, where there are so many things happening in this geostrategic world. But the real reasons are not coming out on the newspapers and the television stations around the world. Why? Because the news agencies that do the uh, shaping and making of public opinion for the interests of the big, big, big world powers, the ones that we have just mentioned several times, Reuters, AP, AFP, and so on, they haven't informed India about the reasons behind this. So, I will read this. It says here, it's only, a, uh, it's only one uh, paragraph, it says here, petroleum for India. Well, it was here, but the point is this. One, oil has no substitute. That's why oil import, oil exporting countries, oil producing countries are being evaded. We can talk about coal and we can talk about gas. And certainly, Venezuela produces gas and oil. Venezuela and India will continue producing oil together. And India's ports will continue receiving every day more oil from Venezuela. Indian refineries will continue receiving Venezuelan oil to be processed, refined, and taken to the retail market. Oil is essential and we need, as brother and sister countries, we need to keep on together building the multipolar world which can only, and only a multipolar world can guarantee balance and peace so that the market, 
so that companies can plan and profit from investment, but not taken out of the market through illegal and criminal ways like they are trying to do. Challenges are opportunities are there. I hope I have described them all, but I wanted you to know that we will continue there with India and we certainly want India to continue there with us in Venezuela. Thank you very much on behalf of every family in Venezuela, of the millions of families in Venezuela that need India as a sister country. Thank you very much indeed. Good night.